So there has been a huge craze for Pokemon lately. I don't know if there's any other company out there that have launched so many successful products so close to one another. It all started with, you know, Pokemon Go that took over the world, and then the Pokemon movie, and then they had to go and have a 25th anniversary, and now everybody wants to take part in Pokemon trading cards. And in general, the trading card industry has gone through the roof as well. And in fact, even this week, PSA, one of the card grading companies, has said, hey, we're not going to do any more card grading because we cannot keep up with the demand for grading cards. Part of this may be fueled by box breaks on YouTube. It's become an essential component for any successful YouTuber. Unfortunately, acquiring Pokemon cards has actually been quite difficult. And if you buy them online, you're either A, going to get scammed, or B, going to pee, <laughs> going to pee, no, not going to pee, or two, pay scalper pricing, which I absolutely refuse to do, but don't worry, there's hope. For those of you who want to get some of that Pokemon experience, but you know, you can't find packs at your local Walmart or whatever, I'm going to be doing a giveaway of the 25th anniversary Pikachu Hollows. So I have 10 of these to give away. And before the end of this video, we will be talking about how you can win one of these yourself. Another industry has exploded as well, and that is NFTs, blockchain verified ownership of digital assets. So if you're into collectibles or art, you've probably heard of NFTs, non-fungible tokens, where each token is unique. And if you own that token and it's associated with your address that you have the private key for, well, then that is verified ownership that you own that token. So you might be wondering, where does Pokemon come into this? As of right now, Pokemon does not have an official NFT set. However, the entire collectible industry is changing. And within the next five years, any company that is not considering digital collectibles is gonna be left behind. But before we get too deep into that, this is Coin Breakthrough. We post videos every day at 10 a.m. Eastern time. If you want to know more about NFTs and collectibles, follow along with my first edition base set PSA 10 Pokemon card collection, or learn about cryptocurrency, blockchain, and decentralized finance, then this channel is for you. On this channel, we're gonna stay up to date with the latest and greatest in the collectible space and cryptocurrency space, and make it exciting and understandable for everybody. So join along for the journey and be sure to enable notifications so you get notified when we post new videos. All right, so before we get too into this, why would you want to own something that's digital? Everyone says, oh, well, you could just, you know, copy paste, take a photo of it, screenshot, I and mean, it doesn't really mean anything. But let me tell you, I understand the value of owning something digital. This brings me back to my days of RuneScape. For those of you who are unaware, RuneScape was a foundational game to the early internet. And on this game, you could collect rare items that were associated with some special event, usually a holiday. And one of these items was a Halloween mask. And I, little old me, was able to acquire a green Halloween mask. Now this green Halloween mask was one of the most affordable rares, but still was rare enough that it still made sure everybody around you knew that you were rich and they were poor. So that gave you clout. You were able to, you know, flex on all your friends. And it definitely helped when trying to get a girlfriend in RuneScape. <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> That's pretty funny, honestly. Uh, so yeah, I was a pretty big deal. The problem with this rare item was that it was exclusive to this one game and the rarity of it was controlled entirely by Jagex. I trusted them because they weren't just going to make new Halloween masks. However, it was isolated to this one game and it really doesn't have any value beyond that game. Blockchain technology is disrupting the gaming space and items in game can be NFTs that can be used in other games or sold on a marketplace outside of that game's ownership. So these are considered assets that can be traded for real world money. And this is something that took me hundreds of hours to acquire. So it very well could be worth something if it was an NFT on an open marketplace. But this video is not about gaming. It just helps you understand how a digital item can be considered very rare and valuable. When it comes to the trading card space, trading cards have a limited quantity and there are also special cards. So for example, this Pikachu, this is tied to the 25th anniversary of Pokemon and you can only get it through General Mills cereal. So although 
the difference between this Pikachu and this Pikachu isn't really a thing. There's still a limited quantity of these, and therefore there is, to some extent, rarity and a desire to have them. Now, is this one rare? Well, it's probably not going to auction on eBay for the price of a PSA 10 first edition Charizard. However, it also is tied to a special event in Pokemon's history, the 25th anniversary, and therefore has much higher demand. Obviously, card companies understand the importance of this. And digital collectibles is not a new thing. In fact, inside of a Pokemon booster pack, they include a digital pack as well. So just for fun, I'm gonna open this on camera. So very first thing in here is a code, which can be redeemed for an online booster pack. But just like that Halloween mask in RuneScape, it's useless outside of that game because it's not designed as an NFT. If instead there was some chance to get some super rare card that, you know, maybe there's only a certain number of them in existence, then that card I just threw away might actually be useful for something beyond just the online Pokemon game. So just for fun, I'm gonna go through these cards, see if we got anything good. And we got a Hollow Mr. Mime. Cool. Now, these digital cards could, but would not have to, integrate with an online game. That could be the Pokemon trading card game online, it could be one of their Switch games or Pokemon Go. This is an asset that could potentially be used cross-game. But I'm less interested in the gaming aspect and more about the ability of opening a digital pack. So, on the computer, I have one of these, and when I open it, I get some new Pokemon cards or even iconic moments in Pokemon history, such as different scenes from Pokemon movies or some part in a game. It can be anything. It's not just tied to images of cards. They will produce an entirely new set of rare collectibles for people to start collecting. This could be the equivalent of the base set first editions in real cards that are going to be possibly worth much more in the future. You know, this is Pokemon's official first NFT set. And with each NFT, there is a programmed quantity. So it's very easy for them to define commons, rares, and very rares. Now, one of the pioneers of NFTs was CryptoKitties. And this allowed people to buy and sell digital kitties, such as this one here, Dragon, which sold for 600 ETH, which is valued right now at $1.2 million. So why anybody would want to own this cat, I don't really know, but this is special. The company behind CryptoKitties is known as Dapper Labs. Dapp meaning decentralized application. And CryptoKitties is not the only thing they're known for. Their next big thing is Top Shot. And this is very similar to what I see numerous card companies doing here in the next few years. And we might just do a video dedicated to Top Shot and the blockchain it's built upon. But for now, let's just talk about the basics of Top Shot. So Top Shot allows you to buy packs of NBA moments. So very similar to cards where, you know, you have a photo of a basketball player, but this allows the integration of video clips into these NFTs. So you buy one of these packs, and when you do this, oh, and you can see they're all sold out because people want to do them for social media, but when you buy one of these packs, you open the pack and you get a collection of moments. And then people are taking these moments, getting some rare ones with each pack, and reselling these on the Top Shop marketplace. Looking back at Pokemon for a moment, if you take a common card, you know, just let's say this right here. This is an energy, arguably the least valuable card of them all. In fact, you can get entire packs of energies. So no matter how long I wait, there's a very small chance that these energies are gonna be worth much of anything at all. That brings up the question, is this NFT of Steph Curry going to be valuable? In my opinion, this is too common. The circulation numbers are too high for this to ultimately become very rare. This still brings up a lot of questions, like gas fees. What if Pokemon made a Pokemon NFT set, launched it on Ethereum, and started selling them? Well, just to buy them, it's gonna cost $50, $100. Nobody wants to do that and build a collection, except, you know, people who have that kind of money to spend. But collectibles should have different tiers so anybody can get involved. 
So we have to ask, what blockchain is going to make this mainstream? Because I'm not so sure Ethereum, at least ETH1, is going to make it happen. The prices with ETH1 for gas are too expensive for digital collectibles to really take off. At least for a company like Pokemon to jump on this opportunity, the gas fees are probably going to have to be a lot lower. Because, for one, it makes it seem like the cards are more expensive when their profits are going to be much lower. And for two, it really limits the resellability of these NFTs when everybody has to pay a large fee. So we're going to look into some of these other NFT blockchains and looking to see what blockchain might be a good choice to release an entire NFT collection. And it could be something that maybe the collection is distributed on numerous chains and that could just be part of that token. You know, we might both have two of the same NFTs. <laughs> But one is on Ethereum and one is on Binance Smart Chain. I don't know. Or maybe there's a way to bridge the gap so that these are ultimately the same token and it's cross blockchain. I think that is like, you know, the ultimate ideal, but I don't think we're quite there yet. So Pokemon, if by chance you're watching this, Reach out, you know, I want to help you out. I want to help you get a digital collection. But please, if you do this, don't make the Pokemon NFTs exclusive to your platform or your website. These need to be open, which is the foundation of blockchain technology, open and permissionless. Anybody should be able to acquire these NFTs without having to stick to your ecosystem. Think of real Pokemon cards. I could sell this on eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. I could trade it for a Charizard with a friend who doesn't know what they're doing. This is so much more fun and usable than if I had to sell this on the Pokemon website. So that is my only request because I think if you launch a set of NFTs, it'll be huge and it'll completely revolutionize the card trading game. I think you have enough people behind you to make it happen. All right, so moving on to the giveaway. I will be mailing these to 10 lucky people and I will put them in top loaders. They're all in pretty good condition. All you have to do, subscribe to this channel. Ideally, you know, you enable notifications so you get notified of new videos and drop a comment saying, if Pokemon were to release a set of NFTs, what NFT would you want to buy? You know, be a little bit creative here. Would it be just literal digital card? Would it be a moment in a movie, show, or game? Drop a comment below and I'll be choosing 10 cool and creative comments. So we'll be doing a video on whether or not you should buy NFTs. In that video, I will announce the winners. So be sure to stay tuned for that video so you know if you won. So yeah, drop a comment and come back for whether or not you should buy NFTs. It should be coming out later this week or next week, so stay tuned. Oh, also, for you Pokemon enthusiasts, I have confirmed an interview with King Pokemon. This is the dude who owns, like, more Charizards than... Pff, than I own energy cards here, which is, like, a lot. All right, so this is the biggest guy in Pokemon, and we're gonna have him on this channel, and surprisingly, it's crypto related. So we have some crazy content coming. Don't wanna miss it, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that video.